Hey there, this is Ms. Caitlin from Fibo Kids Art Academy, and I'm here to tell you about our Around the World series, where we visit the seven continents of the world. Right now, we're visiting the continent of Africa and learning about the different countries within. Um, so I just wanted to give you a little sample today of how those projects might usually go by creating this watercolor portrait of a zebra. Now it's very trendy to create sort of like a rainbow look in the white spaces or the white stripes of the zebra. So I wanted to share with you one technique of how to achieve that with watercolor today. So let's go ahead and take a look at my desk so I can tell you what you're gonna need. All right, so for this picture today, it is in watercolor. So you're gonna need, of course, watercolors. You're also gonna need a pencil and eraser and some kind of permanent black marker. This can be a Sharpie, really whatever you've got. And that's just to do the outlines and to fill in the stripes so you can do your watercolor shading however you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my desk ready to show you how to draw this. Now I'm not gonna do all of the coloring steps with you today. Again, this is really just a sample, so you'll be able to kind of, you know, pause the video, take your time, and do what you need to do as you desire. Go at your own pace. Now I want you to go ahead and take out your piece of paper that you want to draw your zebra on, and you're also gonna need a pencil and eraser. Now I'm gonna be drawing with the Sharpie, but that's just so that you can see. Otherwise, I want you to be using the pencil and eraser. Now we actually need to first start off with drawing the basic shapes for the zebra. This is gonna get the face in a good size and proportion on our paper. So to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and put my glasses on so I can see a little bit better for you. To do this, turn your paper vertical so that it is tall. And we're first gonna draw a big circle right about here on our paper. So go ahead and draw a big circle. It's okay if it's not perfect, but just try your best. See, even mine's just a little imperfect and that's okay. It's basic shape. We're not gonna be using a lot of it later. Next, I want you to go at sort of a diagonal and draw another circle, but this time much smaller. This is gonna be for kind of the nose and mouth of the horse, of the zebra, really. You could use this same basic shape to draw another horse if you want. All right, so we've got our basic shapes lined up. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna kind of use these to guide us to creating that zebra's face shape. So I'll leave my picture of my zebra right here so you can kind of see what we're going for. So I like to start at the top of the head. So I'll start at the top of the head here and I'm gonna start thinking about, you know, all right, this part is a little bit flat on the zebra so I can draw a line here. It's not too noticeable. Next, I need the sort of forehead of the zebra. So I'm gonna take my, in this case, your pencil, but my marker, and I'm gonna draw a diagonal line down, little one in, and then a diagonal line down again. And I want it to touch the side of this little circle here. Now you can see the zebra in our picture today is a little stylized. It has a lot of very uh, pointy lines, very structured, but if you wanna go for a more organic look, I recommend looking at an actual picture of a zebra and kind of drawing from observation that way. I'm gonna to stick to this very stylized look, so I'm gonna continue with that line out. Draw a diagonal line down, again, touching the side of the circle. Drawing a diagonal line back as well, again, touching the side. And then drawing a final diagonal line up, back to the big circle. And there we have kind of that horse's um, mouth or the zebra's mouth all done. All right, now for this next part, uh, we have the jaw. For this, again, you could really use just the curve of the circle for this, but mine's very stylized today in my picture, so I'm gonna draw almost like this very wide V shape. Let's go ahead and draw the horses, the zebra's neck. So we're gonna go ahead and draw from the top of the head here, just a curved line down go underneath the zebra's neck or jaw right here, draw another curve line down. And we'll see a little bit of the body, so we'll draw a little diagonal there. Now before you do anything else, go ahead and erase any parts of those basic shapes that you no longer need. Now I of course cannot do that because I've drawn in marker, so I'm gonna use a pink Mr. Sketch Marker here to show you what I'm erasing if I had an eraser. So I'm erasing all of this business here. 
This might take you a second to do. This is kind of, again, big shapes that we're trying to get rid of. And again, the reason we drew these in the first place was to help us get the zebra's head in a good size and proportion. Now, zebras, where can you find them? Uh, well, in a lot of places. Mostly, you can find them in grasslands of East Africa and then in the woodlands of Southern Africa. They're highly adaptable creatures, so they can, uh, they'll can they try to make the best out of any situation in terms of habitat, uh, but those are the places you're usually going to find them. All right, from here, we can go ahead and draw in the zebra's ear. Now, we're going to see one of the ears a little bit more clear because it's closest to us and not covered up by this their awesome hair that they have. It sticks straight up. So for the ear, again, mine's very stylized, but you could just draw a big rainbow shape if you want to take the easy route today. Otherwise, I'm going to draw a couple of diagonal lines up, sort of a V shape on the top, diagonal line down. If I want to be fancy, again, I would look at an actual picture of the zebra. You can see like a little bit of the fold of the ear kind of as it connects to the rest of the zebra's head. You can erase any lines from the head that are going through your ear. We don't need them anymore. And then we're going to go ahead and draw that mane. Now, zebra's mane stick straight up. If you've ever seen uh, like a picture of a real zebra or you've seen the movie Madagascar uh, with Marty, you'll know that the hair just sticks kind of straight up. I kind of think of it in the style of like a mohawk almost. So we're going to go ahead and just have some fun drawing in that mane. Um, I'm going to start from the very top of the head here, kind of on the top of the forehead. I'm going to draw some sort of spikes out. You could really get in there and draw each individual little hair, but I'm just going to do maybe a couple of lines just to kind of give it the impression that uh, all those little hairs are there. And you are going to see just a little bit of the other ear, so you can draw a little upside down V shape on the other side. So let's go ahead and place the eye. Now, because of the way that the zebra is looking in my picture today, I'm only really going to see one eye and then maybe the indication of the other one with the eyelashes on the other side. We want the eye to go about maybe right about here on the zebra. So you're going to draw a curved line and then a circle inside. And zebras, as well as other horse-like creatures, they have these very long eyelashes. So you can draw in a lot of eyelashes if you want to. If you want to make the eye more realistic, you can. You can add in highlights, whatever you like. Just make sure that you add in the eyelashes for the other eye, kind of in this little corner here on the zebra. All right. So this part, again, you've erased this already, but we need to draw sort of the part where the zebra's nose changes from this black into the stripes on its face. So go ahead and start maybe halfway down your nose and draw a U shape. And then you're gonna draw this wave. And that'll be sort of that color change from the nose to the rest of the zebra. And we can go ahead and draw a nostril. That's just a curved line with a horizontal line underneath. You can add in more details if you want, like you can add in the inside parts of the ear. And from here, you just have to create your stripes. Now, each zebra is unique. No zebra stripes are the same. That's actually how they can tell each other apart, even if we as humans can't always tell them apart from one another. But on a zebra, your stripes don't even have to look exactly like my zebra, and they probably won't look anything like other zebras that are either drawn or real. So go ahead and have some fun drawing in the stripes of your zebra. I would say the only piece of advice I have for this is if you're looking at a picture of an actual zebra, their stripes kind of form around different facial features. For example, on like the side of their face here, instead of the stripes going all backwards in a vertical direction, uh, or in a diagonal direction, they're all kind of going down in like these curved lines following the curves of their cheek. You can notice something similar happening here on like the forehead. Instead of going in the same direction as these, they are kind of going away from like the center of their face. So think about that as you begin to draw and have some fun adding in different little stripes on your zebra. Now be careful not to add too much 
kind of a balancing act. This part I'm going to let you do on your own and then go ahead and pause the video, resume when you're ready to keep going, and I will show you a picture of what my zebra looks like all done. All right, if you are resuming the video, I think that means that you're ready to keep going. So I'm going to go ahead and just switch out this guy here for a completed zebra, and it has all the stripes filled in. So this could be what your picture looks like once you take your Sharpie and fill all the stripes in and do all of the outlines. So I would encourage you again, take a moment, pause the video, fill everything in, and then you can join me in on the watercolor steps. So for the watercolor steps, I'm also going to do only a few with them, a few of them with you today. Um, and that's just because I want you to have the time to work on this on your own. So for the watercolor portion of this, um, I recommend maybe filling in the big spaces first. So I, even though I like to start with my light colors first, I'm going to start with the dark colors, which is going to be filling in the nose and then the mane, which is mostly black. So I'm going to get my brush nice and wet. I'm going to start with my black watercolor, but being very careful. And just very lightly filling this whole space in. I actually don't want it to be pure black because again, I'm kind of going for that rainbow look today. So we don't want to have a solid black color because then we can stick other colors on top of it and we'll still be able to see them. So using the nose as the example here, we're almost going to do a wet into wet technique here. So here's all that black watercolor down. While this is still wet, I'm going to clean off my brush, pick up a dark color like purple or blue. I like purple, so I'm going to choose my blue-violet here and just kind of tap that in in the areas that I actually want to be dark. Now it may not look like much to you sitting at home, but in real life, this is very much purple down here. You can also do the same thing with blue kind of tap that in, and these dark areas that we've covered with a very light layer of black watercolor start to look much more interesting. If you feel like, hey, I maybe added a little bit too much watercolor in an area, you can either take a paper towel and gently tap off extra. Paper towel will kind of indiscriminately take off a lot, so you can always just gently readjust with a wet brush, kind of pushing the watercolor around. So that's how you can do sort of the dark areas of the picture, the dark areas of the zebra, but maybe you're trying to fill in sort of the shadows for the rainbow on the face. Now this part can be really fun. As long as you are just being mindful of how much color is on your brush and how much water is on your brush, you can add in using basically whatever color you want into areas where there would be shadow. For example, I just put down yellow. I'm going to put maybe a little bit of red into this little corner. I think I need that to be spread out. So I'll take water on my brush and just kind of help that along. If I want there to be orange, I'll pick up orange. And I'll start sort of tapping that into some areas. Again, you can kind of spread this out to your heart's desire. And if you want there to be more of the wet into wet look, start with a wet brush in an area, then take your watercolor and tap the color in over top, like so. And you can just continue doing this in any part where there would be shadow. Keep an eye out for colors accidentally mixing you don't want to end up with brown in an area. So just be mindful. Continue to work like that until you're happy with what colors you've added. You could even fill in the whole zebra with a rainbow if that's something that you want to do. I've also seen that done in a lot of pictures of zebras. And when you're done, you'll have something that maybe looks a little like this. For your background, you can feel free to kind of, you know, add something more realistic. Maybe you want to draw the planes that they're in. Um, maybe you want to draw them in their natural habitat, or you could just add a bit of color like I did here. 
So I hope you had a lot of fun creating this project. I would love to see if you have them complete and want to share them with us. Um, and I do hope that you enjoy our little sample today for our Around the World series. If you want to sign up for the Around the World series to check out those different videos and the countries that we're visiting, you can go ahead and go to our website, vivokidsartacademy.com. I hope to see you in class very soon, so bye for now.